Welcome to Go Sports Live. I'm Maddie Marshall, and I got the man of the hour, the story of the hour right now, Tyler Harmon, and we got a decent amount to discuss. Big move. Tyler Harmon headed from Dynasty to Houston Heat. We're going to be talking about those two teams. We're going to be talking about the upcoming event. We're going to talk a little bit about the 10-man, where Tyler and I were just teammates out of Maryland, which was pretty badass yes. and super fun. Uh, unfortunately, we did take third place. So uh, let's just Let's just jump into it right away. Well, first of all, I got to ask you how you're doing. I know you got a big weekend coming up. You just had a big weekend first practice with the team. The event is on the horizon here. So how are you feeling right now after that first practice? Mm -hmm. Feeling great. And my God, I love that you guys put the podcast on it. Thank you so much for doing that. That is absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, I'm feeling really good. We had a really productive uh, practice with the guys. Um, it's great to you know, have Fedorov, who is back in America playing. I already know a lot of the guys from Heat and absolutely love those guys. And, you know, they have really welcomed me with open arms. And I couldn't ask to be surrounded by a, a greater, better group of guys. It's been obviously a crazy couple weeks. We kind of broke the internet here, um, but super excited for the future. <laughs> yeah, so, and it was kind of cool too, because on Cat Factory, our 10-man team, you, you know, we had Chad George and, yeah. and Ryan Moorhead. God, dude, those dudes are so awesome. I love Chad George and Ryan Moorhead. Obviously, your new teammates from Houston Heat. It was it's always great to to get mm -hmm. to spend time with those guys. Have you played with those guys much before? Or I mean, obviously, you just got to hang out with them all weekend. You know, two weekends ago now, and then mm -hmm. the first practice. And I definitely want to dive into you know Houston Heat's performance at the last event. Obviously, getting you getting Fedorov back. There's a lot to unpack there. But have you played with those guys before? Mm -hmm. Uh, me and Moorhead actually played on Edmonton Impact together for a little bit. And then I've always just, you know, anytime that they're at a field or anything like that, we get like throw together games or just, you know, for the love of paintball, everybody playing paintball. And uh, it's just the most amazing community. You know, paintball is truly the best sports community in the world. And we're all so grateful to be a part of this whole thing. It's It's an amazing tapestry that we've built with all the unique, you know, personalities and people that are that are contributing to making paintball the best that it can be. But yeah, man, those guys are a riot. Always a good time hanging out with Chad George and Moorhead and all those dudes on heat. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk a little bit about, obviously we got to get into some of the harder questions here eventually, but let's talk about the roster here for mm -hmm. Houston heat and how you guys are looking for this upcoming event. So uh, a lot of people that have been watching the game for a long time know that Houston heat hasn't made any big moves um, in about three years. So the fact that, that they finally did after, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a, a not a great performance for them, they didn't make Sunday at the last event. They ended up taking 11th. Uh, and Dynasty also struggled too, but did make Sunday, but took 10th and lost in the wild card round. We're going to discuss both those things. But it kind of wanted just to talk about this mm -hmm. roster. And because I think with getting you and getting Fedorov and how versatile you guys are, and, and obviously, you know, you're not going to be like, I'm playing exactly this position every single time because all your opponents are going to watch this. I understand that. But I think that the you know as the game's going more towards versatility, having guys be able to play different positions, it's been that way for a long time. But we've really in the past couple of years seen teams really dive into that and make that a big part of being less scoutable. So let's talk about this Houston Heat roster. So mm -hmm. you get Fedorov back, pick you up. Where do you guys kind of as Todd talked to you about where he foresees you playing, where Fedorov's going to be playing? Are you guys going to be together on one side, or obviously maybe switching it up a bunch? I don't really know. Just mm -hmm. what do you think? Of course. Yeah, um, yeah, just look for us to be all over the field. I mean, the game of paintball is very unique where every single paintball player needs to be able to play every position 
And if you're not training that way, you really should incorporate that because as soon as you lose an exterior player or an interior player or someone in the middle, someone has to fill these roles or be aware of the gaps in the game. So, you know, being super versatile and well-rounded and able to play all styles, um, that's what makes the best players in the world. And fortunately enough, you know, there is several, we have, we have a lot of players on this team that um, can do that kind of paintball which is going to be fun to watch for everybody out there tuning in. Yeah, I mean, obviously you got a guy who's a little bit more of a specialist, but insanely good at that specific specialty, a guy like Chad George. I mean, sure, can he play on the D side? Of course, but he's so good at playing the snake. You got guys like Billy Bernacci from X Factor, um, guys like Alex Goldman. I mean, these are snake side specialists. So yeah, they're on the field nine times out of 10, maybe almost nine and a half yeah. times out of 10, <laughs> guy's going to be going to the snake side. You just got to pick where he's going to go. But that being said, we have seen mm -hmm. guys like, uh, you know, Jesse Stevens, who will occasionally go over there and, you know, take a, a little bit, let um, Billy take a little bit of break, even though he rarely takes break. Archie mm -hmm. occasionally too. And so when you're lining up against a team uh, like X Factor right now, it's kind of tough to tell exactly where certain guys are going to go. Where are they going to put Archie? And, and, and that's kind of, you know, I remember, you know, when uh, we had put out a poll as far as, you know, best first front attackers on the D side. And we intentionally didn't put you into that specific role because, and then Ryan's like, you should have put Tyler in there. I was like, bro, wait, we'll just wait on it for a second. Tyler's going to be in the, you know, uh, mm -hmm. the, the, that, that kind of like the best all-star category with Malloy and you, you know, like, because to me, and when I look at how, you know, you've been playing this game for so long, we used to play against each other back in the day when you were like 13 years old. Yeah. So I just kind of, I look at your game being so <laughs> versatile. I think that's one of the, you know, the huge pickups that uh, are why you are such a big pickup for Houston Heat and a big loss for Dynasty because of that versatility. I mean, are you kind of just jonesing to play mm -hmm. a bunch of different positions or do you kind of feel more comfortable in one spot? Um, yeah, I mean, I really think I excel, you know, on a Dorito side. It's just because of my size. I'm 6'2". I'm a, I'm a big guy, you know, and I do get down in the snake too. I played a lot of snake side as well, you know, over the past couple of days that we were playing you know the the layout so i'm all over the place i'm going everywhere up the middle to the left to the right wherever i feel that the game needs you know to be expressed there because it's always shifting and changing you just have to be riding the moment and you know optically seeing what the opponent is doing and trying to outsmart them it's a big game of chess um, we're all just trying to essentially outsmart each other out there and it's it's pretty amazing um you know, what we get to do as professional paintball players. It's a very unique sport. I hope that someday, you know, more of the world will understand and know about this sport because it's one of the funnest things you'll ever do in your whole life. Yeah. And it, it, it's definitely, it's insanely fun. Speaking of real uh, fun, can we just pause real quick and talk about how awesome the 10 man was? Um, that was a real yes, good please. time. Cause I know. <laughs> it, yeah. Well, the NX look, NXL it's the, you know, it's the it's the tip of the spear, right? It's the most difficult test you can get to. And so it does come with its fair share, rightfully so, of stress. And you got laser like focus on that. Not to say that, you know, it can't be stressful to play 10 man in the woods because it's an intimidating battle. But Jesus Christ, <laughs> it was so fun. Every time I play 10 man, I forget how fun it is. And uh, and there was kind of a cool mix mm -hmm. of a deep woods field, a trench field. They're calling it a trench field, but it kind of you know, a lot of people are saying like, oh, it was the coolest. Uh, recreational field I've ever played on, but I'm kind of glad they had something like that because we did have to play on stuff like that back mm -hmm. in the day. And if you are a paintball player and you kind of feel like you should be able to play every single type of paintball, it's kind of good to get a test like that. Um, and then, a, you know, just a standard, really yeah. playable hyperball field that I thought was, you know, there's some big bunkers out there and it was kind of, it was cool. I just had a blast playing with cap was awesome. And I got to play a little bit more than I thought I was going to, cause Brandon mm -hmm. hurt his back. So it was good. Dude. It was a good time. I mean, did you have a good yeah. time? Oh, it was the best, the absolute best time. And we got those sweet uh, cap jerseys with the gold chain on them. I've wanted one of those since I was a little kid. So that was like a dream come true to to finally get one of those jerseys. And uh, yeah, the, the hyperball kind of reminded me of like old Modesto X in the middle style with, uh, you know, the classic hyperball bunkers everywhere. And then the trench field was insane. That truly was one of the most fun fields I've ever played because on this whole side of the field, it was like, just a bunch of wormholes that you could just go traversing in. And um, me and Rainy were just running amok over there in the trenches with JP Augustine. And it was just, it was just a great time. Um, and shout out to Infamous for taking that. They took first place. 
Uh, we got third on that one. They played a really, really good tournament. And uh, it kind of was, I think that was the latest that I've ever played paintball. It was like eight, eight o'clock, eight thirty, the finals. And we were like, all right, here we go, boys. Let's go get it. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened in, cause in, in 10 man, when you go to the finals, it's not like finals at the next event where it's two teams and they're going to play each other in mm -hmm. you know a, a game and figure out the winner. It's three teams go in. And then from those three teams, you play each team. And then after that, the points are counted up and then it determines the winner. So a mm -hmm. little bit more strategic as to what you need to do in each game. So who were the other two teams? And then how did those finals break down? Cause I was pissed when I got the plane. Yeah. I was like, God yeah. damn it. Infamous one. I mean, I love infamous, but <laughs> I, I thought, the, I thought the team was vibing, dude. I thought we had it. I know, man. And we did, uh, there was Jeezy infamous and then us in that final round. Jeezy beat us. Uh, we lost a couple players early and then we got a penalty and, and then we lost another player on the far side of the field. So me and Ryan Moorhead were like up in the middle 50 and I could just hear people from the right starting to surround us and then from the left. And I was like, Oh, get ready, buddy. They're going to start coming. <laughs> and, uh, we tried to fight it off, but we just couldn't. And, um, that was the one game that we lost. And in, in a round like that, you can't lose a game, you know, at worst, you got a stalemate and try and salvage those points. And then, uh, when you get yeah. that, that loss, it really hurts you. Yeah, it's crazy, but that's how it is at those events. I mean, you could go an entire event, lose just that one game because we were undefeated in the prelims mm -hmm. and they made it in to the finals mm -hmm. undefeated and then dropped that one game. Yeah, Dave was saying he got or just it was kind of one of those starts where if you are alive through after the first two minutes, you're like, well, Jesus Christ, this did not go well. How do we lose five <laughs> dudes in, in the span of, you know, 90 seconds? um on the deep woods field yeah. this is this is going really really bad and you're listening yeah you're listening to the kills come <laughs> off you're like that's a lot of us and not a lot of them and i haven't shot anybody yet so this is yeah. not good uh but still yeah. it was just and yeah one, it, it, it definitely i'm sorry go ahead uh, i was just gonna say at one point i literally like turned back and i was like cap where are you guys what's going on back here like i was trying to find uh some players to like come and join us me and ryan we were up in the 50 there <laughs> And then you don't hear anything back and you're like, that's definitely not good. If I'm really far up here and no one behind me is, and everyone stopped talking, you just hear the cicadas. It's, you know, we would say crickets normally, yeah. but all the cicadas were out. So you just hear the cicadas mating and you're like, oh, that's actually kind of cool, but this is a really yeah. bad, that's bad if I can't hear yeah. any of the voices behind me. <laughs> um, but yeah, Infamous was playing really well and those dudes are super fun. So, and I like what they're, love what they're doing with their program. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, and GZ too. It's cool to see Will put together that squad. So just yeah. 10 man, if you guys haven't been out to the 10 man event, it was a great, it was definitely a really good vibe. Would like to see a little bit better of like a pace of play um, because those weights were brutal, but the fields were really fun and everyone had a smile on their face. Uh, stories were being told, beers were getting crushed, auto cockers and mechanical guns were being shot in anger. It was all sorts of a good time. So I'm definitely looking forward to the iron city classic. We'll be actually broadcasting that one live. And then, uh, the next uh, ICPL, which I believe is going down in Chicago. So yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be awesome. Um, so let's kind of dive go. in and let's talk about the hard stuff here. So how did this kind of go? How did this go down? Like how did, I mean, how did this move mm -hmm. happen? Because I mean, a lot of people were so shocked, you know, you're talking about all this broke the paintball internet definitely did because, you know, as, as far as dynasty mm -hmm. losing you, it is the biggest player loss they've had since the retirement of Oliver Lang. You've been on the team for eight years. You're a beast. Everybody knows that they know that your opponents know that. Um, you know, there's certain dudes that can get paid to play this game and you're one of those guys. So I'm happy for you. And, and obviously uh, all the heat fans are going to be stoked. All the dynasty fans are going to be pissed and all the Ty Tyler Harmon fans should be stoked because, you know, this puts you in a good place on a new mm -hmm. squad reinvigorated mentally. So, but kind of let's track that ball back a little bit. You know, how did this kind of go down? Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, I'm not, uh, I'm not a little 14 year old Tyler anymore. I got, you know, two kids and a beautiful wife and, um, I'm going to be 33 years old and I just had to make the most, you know, difficult decision that I've ever had to make in my life in paintball for the betterment of my children. Essentially. Um, that's what it came down to. And, uh, man, I'm so grateful for dynasty and for the entire organization, everything that they've done for me. Um, on so many levels, you know, as a paintball player and a businessman and just a person, a father, um, a friend, they're uh, exceptional people. 
and uh, I'll I'll always have a piece of dynasty with me. I mean, that goes without saying, um, but that was just the kind of the difficult thing that I had to do. Um, and I just had to hold on tight, you know, cause the, the world, you know, went flipped on its head when, uh, when I made that decision to play for Houston heat. Yeah. And, um, you know, obviously these are difficult conversations to have, obviously, you know, like I tell everyone when there's in these, in these positions, not everything is always for public consumption. So if you can't talk about stuff, I understand, but was it purely financial or was it because everyone knows that heat, you know, heat and impact, they have the most money in the game for the most part. And I've said this on the show a ton of times. You know, if you're a pro paintball player, as it stands now, you're a hired gun for a rich guy or you're a poster boy for a company. Those are the two ways to play pro paintball. Mm -hmm. You can teach paintball. You can work at a company as well. Those come with their own things. Um, you can hustle and, you know, gear and all that sort of stuff. I mean, I'm just being real with all the kids coming up here. You know, can you make money playing this game? Sure. Yeah. But it's in a very select few. It's really difficult to do it. So make sure you got a job or a trade, something you can fall back on, even if you're one of the best of the best, because it's not always going to work out. But that being said, mm -hmm. was it just a, a financial thing? Like, hey, because you, yeah, you got two mm -hmm. kids, dude. Like, and anyone that faults you for trying to take yeah. care of your family, it's like I've said before, I love the San Diego Padres. I think there's one San Diegan on the San Diego Padres, and he's not there because he's from San Diego, you know, like he's there because. Yeah. that's the best deal he could get at the time because he throws a baseball for a living. You know? So it's, it's just, these yeah. are, again, it's, yeah. it's difficult because all the dynasty people are like, I can't believe Tyler would betray us like this. And it's like, well, dude, what do you, mm -hmm. you know, what do you expect? But anyway, so is it just financial mm -hmm. or is there kind of other stuff too? Or what do you think? Well, just, just so that you guys know, I also have my uh, Arizona department of agriculture license right here in front of me in case, you know, I ever have to use that. And, and to be honest, I was at a dilemma where it's either quit paintball or do something of this nature that, you know, and, and by God, man, to be surrounded by these guys on Houston, Heat, I'm the luckiest person in the world. Have you looked at this roster? It's insane. So I'm so blessed on so many fronts. Um, it's not like, you know, I just went to some throw together team that uh, doesn't have a chance of winning. We're going to come and make statements out here on the paintball fields. And um, yeah, man, I don't want to quit paintball. I want to continue to play paintball for a long time. Um, and I was put in a really difficult position in various ways that I had to make a, a difficult decision as well. And, you know, I'm extremely, extremely excited for the future and also extremely grateful for my past and for everything that, you know, dynasty has done for me. There's no betrayal. Um, you know, it's they I'm supported on multiple fronts, you know, uh, I'm sure the dynasty guys probably don't want to, you know, chat with me too much right now, but I know that deep down that they support me. Um, and, and I know I'm fully supported on Houston heat. So I'm just, you know, extremely grateful for, for the experience of, uh, being able to hopefully hoist up some big trophies with heat and, uh, and move into the future with power. How did the, I know all those are all tough phone calls to make, but the one with Marcelo must have been particularly difficult just because of how close you guys have become working on the podcast. And, you know, I, I when I got a chance to talk to Marcelo eventually after it all had been said and done, it was all, and everything was out there. And I was, and he, and I was like, oh, you're going to get Tyler on the show. Obviously you got, you guys are going to get first crack at it. Um, and then he's like, you know, actually, you know, Tyler's headed off to play 10 man this weekend. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, who's he playing with? He's like, he's playing with cap. And I was like, oh, great. We're going to be teammates. So I was going to get to see him when you talk all about it. Um, but how was that? So I, obviously a bunch of tough phone calls and you got to call all the guys and break the news to them. That's never an easy thing to do. But the one with Marcelo must have been, I'm guessing that was probably the hardest one. Oh, yeah. Um, there was... Yeah, several difficult, you know, emails and uh, and phone calls that were made, and it, you know, it's I'm not gonna lie, like it was, it's it hurt, you know, because it's a difficult decision, and but in the same token, there's a lot of like you said, reinvigoration and uh, inspiration that is that is reinvigorated when you when you do something like this. So it's been such a powerful experience. Um, Marcelo is the absolute best friend anybody could ever ask to have by their side. The guy has been so supportive and um, is just truly a class act, like just a stand up dude who has my back a million percent and fully supports me and understands, you know, what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Um, so I couldn't ask to have someone better than Marcelo in my corner, just supporting me the whole way along. 
Yeah. Yeah. And I, I was for sure, you know, uh, broke down a little bit when I called him and, and, uh, it was a really difficult phone call, but, um, just the, the things that he told me and the, the inspiration that he fed me as well has, has pushed me into this with, uh, you know, with just pure invigoration for the future. Yeah. And, you know, again, talking about that, that motivation, having to keep the mind so focused, this is a constant theme we discuss always every time. I mean, whether I'm in front of mm -hmm. a camera or we're talking about it over beers, if I'm talking to the best in the business, mm -hmm. um, we are always discussing what's going on in their mind because, you know, that is the most important thing. I mean, the, the physical stuff, they obviously have that or they wouldn't be in the position that they're in. But the mind is the most complicated thing that we know of in the universe. And it's also such a, a hard thing to hone <laughs> and to keep tuned. And, uh, and I, and I know you and I, you know, we've talked about of this a lot too, but you know, I kind of, I got to ask you, how hard is it to kind of, I mean, obviously a, a move like this sends a giant energy mm -hmm. bolt through you because, you know, obviously you, 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 you know, you get paid to do something, you have family, you got to take care of. I mean, obviously that was the case before, but this is just another repack of energy, you know, of batteries being mm -hmm. put into the machine essentially. Um, but, but in your own mm -hmm. words, I mean, how, how hard is it right now? I mean, obviously you were dynasty, you guys just came off world cup victory. So that's gotta be awesome as well too. But dude, you've been doing this just as long mm -hmm. or longer than anyone in the game. I mean, some guys are older than you so that you could say, okay, they've been playing paintball longer than Tyler has, but no one can really say in the league. I don't think anybody, including any or Greenspan or any of the guys, the core guys have been playing tournament paintball as long as you, because you started doing this when you were, I mean, it's got to be right around the same period of time. You've been doing this. Like I said, I played with you when you were like a little kid, like a legit 13 year old kid. <laughs> and now you're 33. Um, yeah. You know, so it's just, uh, and, and you've been at that high level the whole time. I mean, you were out there, you know, going to, you know, going to battle with us when we were grown ass men. I mean, kind of younger, younger grown ass yeah. men, but I, I guess 20 is still a grown uh, ass Y'all were grown. Regardless, <laughs> how do you, how, yeah, how do you stay, how do you stay motivated, dude, after doing it this long? Money aside, well, like, how do you um, stay motivated? I just, I just look in, into my wife's eyes and my beautiful two baby boys' eyes, and that's all the inspiration I need, man. And, uh, and I am paintball. I'm the living embodiment of paintball. I live, breathe, think, sleep, dream, you know, just constantly creating thoughts about paintball and trying to, you know, create amazing content about paintball. We have the Play the Game podcast and um, just trying to, to do everything that I can in my human physical abilities to give paintball the biggest boost that it possibly can have for the future because I want to see this around for millennia to come. I want the Jetsons to be playing paintball in outer space, you know what I mean? I want <laughs> paintball to be um, around forever and I, uh, I'm just so grateful for everything that the game has given me. Um, and it continuously inspires me. Everybody out there who supports me, who doesn't support me, um, you know, it, it's all love from me and I just love paintball. Um, and I'm excited. I'm excited for the future. Yeah. So because of the, if we could just dive a little bit deeper into the mental tenacity needed, because that's one of the things people know you for. I mean, your friends, your enemies, or the people or your peers that play against yeah. you. Um, everyone's like, dude, uh, Tyler mm. is always so hype. You know, you can hear it just emanating from the pits. When you guys are getting ready for a game, you would always be the guy leading the chance. And there's always been somebody like that on Dynasty. Dynasty had multiple ones of those. I mean, Johnny was like that. Oliver was like that. Um, but you have, mm -hmm. I, I do truly feel it is a, 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 a component, a big component of the mojo for certain teams, the vibe, the energy, however, again, you want to call it, define it. But that's a thing. Mm -hmm. So, and I remember you as a kid, mm -hmm. like you were a, kind of a little bit more chill than you are now. I, I, I don't mean that as like, I mean that in a good mm -hmm. way, because, but so where did that yeah. come from? How is that something, is that a spirit that you've worked on and honed? Because to <laughs> me, a lot of people might just think that you were, oh, he's always been like that. And I'm not to say you weren't energetic, but the laser like eyes, the focus that I see out of you since like your late twenties and even in your mid twenties, when you were kind of, you know, before you got onto dynasty and I, I really felt that who you are mm -hmm. as a, as like a captivating energetic player kind of coalesced in your mid to late twenties and kind of, I've just seen that evolution mm. of your game. So is that something you consciously focused on? Cause a lot of guys out there might, might want to try to figure out how to summon that. How did you summon that? Where did it come from? Yeah. 
Uh, that would be my mother, Mariana Riquelme Harmon. Uh, she is my <laughs> spirit. And um, I guess the best way to put it is there is energy all around us as people, as individuals, um, sentient beings here on this planet. We have energy fields and we our eyes can only see so much light. You know, we can only see so much of the light spectrum, but there's a tremendous amount of stuff going on around us. And if you Google, you know, Merkaba, M-E-R-K-A-B-A, Merkaba, it's like a, like a star, star field that you have around you. And we all have this energy and you can feel when people are down, when they're up. And I've really uh, honed in on, you know, trying to remember about this energy and done a lot of reading and studying and, and just, you know, really being quiet and breathing and listening to myself and um, setting intention for, for how I want to attack paintball and how I want to attack life. And, uh, there's, there's a tremendous amount that we can do with, um, conscious thought and breathing and setting intention. So if you just like really focus on, you know, being pure in your heart and trying to attack the game in the purest way that you can, um, to push it forward, then, then that's what you're going to get because your words and your thoughts, they become things in reality. So you want to make sure that you're feeding yourself, you know, the right, uh, nutrients, not only physically, but, but mentally as well, so that you can be the best teammate for your team and, you know, just keep things moving in an upward trajectory. You know, like we always talk about boosting, boost the game up. Um, there's no time to go any other way in a paintball game. You have such a limited amount of time. So we have to make those moments, you know, really valuable and precious as we play the game. So as you went through your twenties, and did bounce around a couple different teams and you know, end up on dynasty. Was there anyone that you kind of looked at again? Did you define it? And maybe it was a mixture of all of this, but I just, I saw you going from mm -hmm. a guy who like, like I'm good at this. I've been doing this for a long time. I wouldn't say coasting at all because you badass player that entire time, but I just felt like there was the next level of a focus that you achieved somewhere. And so you're saying that that kind of mm -hmm. came from you listening to your, you know, feeling energy, listening to your inner voice, taking some silent moments in breath, or, I mean, kind of let's dive in. I just, cause it's such a hard thing, dude. Like it's so hard. We talk yeah. about things that you can't teach. <laughs> like you can't teach that shit, you know, you, and, and people are always looking for that. You know, you know, the guys that are kind of mute on the sidelines and you want to see a sign of life and you're like, man, you know, he's pretty good, but Jesus Christ, yeah. dude, he just doesn't talk. And I don't know what's going on. And, um, whatever it, but so I, cause it's just that you are such yeah. a rare creature on that level. So I just, and I'm not going to have you for long. I definitely do. You know, I know you got to go. You got more. You got some episodes you guys are cutting up to play the game podcast. And you guys are going to be heading to Philly for practice. So I know your time here is limited. But I feel like yeah. this is something that I haven't really heard mm -hmm. you speak on that much. You know, so, and I just, and it is, it's impossible to teach. So since you are one of the best at mm -hmm. bringing that summoning, that, that beastly energy that is needed to go do the crazy pirate Viking stuff that, that, that the best do out on the field that you have to be able to do. Like we always talk about summoning the demon or whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the Archangel Michael with this broadsword coming to smite all the sinners, whatever the hell you want to define that little essence, <laughs> that, that, that beastly essence that comes out. But, uh, but so, like yeah. I said, late twenties and you get on dynasty and, you know, again, when you were kind of going from team to team a little bit, again, you were elite, you're an all-star, but just, you really did kind mm -hmm. of ratchet up the thing. And I really think that you kind of were summoning the correct combat headspace by lasering in your focus. So just la like the last time I'll touch on it again, you have anything else to say about that? Any advice to give to people specifically about how to do that? Yeah. I mean, first of all, like I said, my mom, I was doing classes and, and learning, but being in dynasty as well, like I said, I'll, I'll never stop saying how grateful I am for those experiences. Um, we've won everything that you can win together and we've won it twice. And, you know, we did some amazing things with that organization and being around those individuals, truly did obviously take my game to another level. Um, being able to apprentice under Oliver obviously is going to take your game to another level. I was able to study, you know, the way that he navigated the game and um, really understand the little nuances that he was incorporating in order to be the star that he is and always will be in paintball. Um, so it's, it's, uh, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of time with the family, a little bit of inspiration from art and music and being in Dynasty and, you know, all of these things, they come together and, and they give you a zest for life. Um, I guess that's like the best way I could put it is just being in the moment and 
and trying to be a sponge and enjoy the the now, you know, enjoy every moment with your teammates, enjoy the journeys, enjoy the the downs, the ups, the madness, the cries, the smiles, just enjoy it all. Yeah, man, I love it. I just, it's cool. It's, it's so rare to see that. I, I, I've seen it the best at it, you know, the Lasoyas and the, the Langs and, you know, all the guys that were able to, to play hype like that. And not everyone needs that, but it is, a, you know, we talk about like, what's the secret of the win? And I look at the secret of the win, how you achieve that, that next level. It's a certain type of pliable charisma. I love the word charisma. It's such an important thing mm -hmm. in life. You know, that's one of the difference makers. You know, not everyone has the same level of charisma as other people, but they can use that power, that charisma that they have and let it wash over everybody else and help give them sometimes the vibe that they need to, to get up to the, to, to not again, the, the guy that may have the awesome charisma, like Johnny Perchak, hell of a paintball player, not as good as Angel Fergoza, <laughs> you know, not as good as Angel Fergoza, dude. Like, I'm just sorry. There very few of us ever were as good as Angel on his best days. He was the best guy out there, yeah. but Angel wasn't, he didn't have the boom, huge booming voice and he was charismatic in his own way, but he didn't have that pliable charisma he's going to give to everyone I love else angel. he's going to go out and do it i love angel too but again like the heart doesn't do what the lungs yeah. do the brain doesn't do you know what the opposable thumbs do it's all a thing that kind of comes together in order to, to accomplish the goal that needs to be accomplished yeah. you know so you know angel's the the sharp tip of the dynasty sword right but johnny perchek was part of that beating heart man and he would just help get everybody up and, and oliver would do the same thing and sometimes you have some days you have and some yeah. days you don't you know, some days all you got is the is mm -hmm. the energy you can give to everyone else because you're not shooting anybody that day. Whereas maybe the quiet guy is, he's <laughs> the one doing the slaughtering. So, you know, he's going to, you need to be like, let's just yeah. give this, feed this dude paint and Gatorades or whatever the hell he needs so he can go out there and, and start getting <laughs> us these W's. Um, okay, so let's, because I only got you for about 10 more minutes. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, what do you think, to, like to you, what is the most in part of this move? Like if you had 10 more, I, I do need to talk to you about you know, he needed something here. It wouldn't say they needed something. They could have easily had, you know, they get Fedorov back. They don't pick up you. Let's say you say no, you know, Houston, he could very well go out and win an, an event next, you know, even without Fedorov, they have a badass team. They had a blip here. Um, so we, I do want to speak on that and the bracket you have, which is a gnarly bracket, infamous X factor, energy elite and level. Um, kind of think that damaged Revo dynasty, New York extreme ML Kings bracket actually might be a little bit harder, even though I'm paper you guys might have the bracket death i don't know that's why we shoot the paintballs at each other but 10 more minutes to go that's it is there anything that you haven't been asked yet because again i know you got a ton of stuff to do is there anything you haven't been asked yet that you really want to talk about that you feel is kind of something that's been missed with all of this chaos that's happened mm -hmm. since you left um not necessarily no but you know just know that you only you know life is like an illusion you only see what's in the internet or what's here and there you nobody sees you know the full picture but just know that there's nothing but support on all sides and and uh that we're moving in the right direction and pro sports you know sometimes can be volatile like this um it's kind of the nature of the beast um and dynasty is an amazing business and an amazing team they will um i know that they will continue to do great things and i am always you know going to be um, having a little bit of dragon skin on me, you know, I'll carry that with me for the rest of my life. So I'm just, just grateful for the whole experience. Okay. So based on your bracket in the context of how this layout you think is going to play, you got infamous, you got X factor, you got energy elite and you got level again, maybe it's only, you know, we got eight minutes left. I think we're going to possibly throw the layout up here, but, and then now you've, you've had one weekend oh, cool. on the layout, what you guys have discussed. So what do you think with, there it is right there. So again, another kind of interesting snake side, unconventional snake side, a pretty yeah. standard D side and a middle as always with certain possibilities, how potent will it be? We don't know, but maybe enlighten us again. So with mm -hmm. the bracket that you have around the, with the context, of, you know, being set and this is the battle is because I think that bracket or the layout kind of messed dynasty up a little bit at the start of that last event. Um, obviously you'd be able to break that down a little mm -hmm. bit more, but you know, talk to me a little bit about it. Yeah, uh, this is going to be a wild field. Um, lots of action on the snake side. And the middle has six car washes in the middle. I mean, I remember playing seven man when we had, you know, huge fields and there was two car washes on a seven man field. We got six of them up the middle now. So definitely going to be a lot of action up the middle. 
Uh, the Dorito side is, like you said, pretty standard, but you cannot sleep on a guy out there because um, you can really get to work in and very quickly navigate up those Doritos and be on the opponent's side of the field, um, getting those cross field shots. So it's uh, definitely an extremely deadly field. No matter where you go, there's going to be opportunities. I think that obviously this is going to play dominant with middle snake. Um, Dorito is going to be more of, you know, not an anchor because you can take ground off the break on the Dorito side with how many bunkers there are, but there's just a, there's going to be a lot of action. It's going to be an amazing field to, to watch all the teams run around on. It's going to be great. Do you think, uh, sounds like you're, you're edging towards potentially a faster layout. Um, you have level and energy elite are teams that are going to run right at you. I mean, you're not going to get level i mean they, they shouldn't be slowing it down there's no reason energy elite and level should be trying to slow a game down hey let's get to our bunkers and stay alive bad mm -hmm. game plan if that's what they're going to go with against you know teams of infamous mm -hmm. x factor and heats caliber um so that being said you envision a lot of points being played out here do you think it'll be maybe kind of like we saw at the last one with a little bit of both can you slow this field down what do you think mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it will be kind of like the last one a little bit. There's definitely areas that you can slow the field down. Um, but I think uh, I think we're going to see, you know, some high scoring games. And then you'll have a couple games that that just like last event, you know, will be um, a little bit slower. They'll play a little bit more cautious. Uh, but, you know, what we've seen with NXL and what they've been doing with these experiments on these fields is that you're getting a lot of action, man. Um, they've set it up so that so that uh, we get to see some cool bunkering, we get to see run throughs, we get to see, you know, movement. Um, I think that it's no secret, you know, um, a little bit more movement is probably going to be rewarded just because there's no reason to to stay back and get shot in your pack. You know what I mean? It's it's time to, you know, make those moves. And if you're going to earn those wins, you got to go out there and get it and win those gun battles. <clears throat> so infamous and x-factor those are the two teams above you on the rankings with heat taking 11th place i guess i should ask you this question real quick how was the vibe on heat you know you got tom martinez as a coach now you like we've been talking about all uh show long you got Fedorov back they pick you up uh, our you know former mvps like chad george and ryan moorhead out there um ronnie dizon is a phenom i mean you just gotta just it's a stud team man top to bottom how is the vibe on heat right now mm -hmm. knowing you got to go into the potential bracket of death with X factor and infamous. The vibe is good. It's lit. It's Houston heat lit. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. The guys are great. I'm just so stoked to uh, be able to play. I've all, it's been a dream of mine to play alongside um, the Russian dudes, you know, Mishka and, uh, and Fedorov and also, you know, all the East coast legends that I grew up as a kid, you know, watching and studying. There's just, um, so many great paintball players on this team and we got the Midwest legends as well. We got, we got the legends from all over the map, you know, and, um, it's going to be really exciting to see uh, what we can do together because that's the most important component. Um, you could have the best players in the world, but those guys have to believe in each other. They have to believe in the process. They have to, you know, really trust each other and, uh, and know that, that they can get the job done together. So we have to lean on each other. Um, we all got to have games. We all got to show up and we all got to just get the job done. You know, that's, that's really what it comes down to. Uh, how do you feel your play style is going to work with Car uh, Todd Martinez's coaching style? I think it's going to go great. Uh, I just don't know how much you guys have mm -hmm. worked. I know you know each other very well, but I don't, I, I think you guys have worked with each other a little bit before. Um, but I just feel like you mm -hmm. could thrive underneath his coaching style and then maybe contrast how, you know, Rusty was your last coach. And Rusty did an amazing job with Dynasty, notoriously an incredibly difficult team to coach. And he just retired mm -hmm. now. Skinny Kevin's there. You know, he brings an incredibly highly intelligent mind and a lot of experience. He's coached a lot of top teams. But maybe contrast Rusty and, and Todd and how you feel you're going to be able to work with Todd. Yeah, yeah. Rusty, um, GOAT, great coach, greatest of all time, man. And uh, the game... I hope that he comes back and does some more coaching at some point because he's just a, a really meticulous uh, guy who who gets all the details dialed in. And Todd is the same way. Um, I, I cannot wait to win games for Todd. 
And that's what you want. You want a player that's excited to win for his coach. And I couldn't be more stoked to win for that guy. You know, like I love Todd Martinez. That guy's my spirit animal. I remember watching like push videos when I was a kid and him like tying his headband in the mirror. And I would just get so juiced up to go play paintball off of like moments like that. And um, I, uh, I'm i just kind of taken back. It's, it's almost surreal, you know, these guys um, like having a coach like like Todd to be able to play under because um, throughout his history of paintball, I followed him really closely and he's been a huge inspiration to me. So uh, I really want to go get the job done for him. He is super excited to you know do everything within his power to give us all the information that we need in order to be successful out there. And you know, at the end of the day, it's not up to the coach; it's up to the players. We got to go out there and, and get it done. He can give us all the information give us all the details, um, but we got to go and execute and that's on us. Uh, last question. Infamous did very well at the last event. You lost to San Antonio X Factor while on Dynasty in the wildcard round um, to take that 10th place. So mm -hmm. your thoughts on Infamous and X Factor real quick. Infamous making it all the way to the finals yeah. after not making any Sundays in 2020. They look the best they've looked in years. Yeah. I know I, I like watching them right now. They're doing really good. Um, and X Factor as well. We got to practice with them in Texas and they're looking great as well. It's, you know, it's just whoever's going to show up and bring it and uh, and not sit back and wait for things to happen. You got to bring it and, and just go get it. Um, Infamous is, they're reinvigorated. You can tell just in their swagger of play. So you got to play knuckle up ball and, and uh, they're going to be in the spots. We're going to be in the spots. Whoever's going to make the right decisions and make the right shots is going to walk away with those games. Well, Tyler, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate your time. I know you got a billion things going on, so I really do truly appreciate you squeezing <laughs> this in uh, before you got to leave to go out to Philly because you guys are heading out there anytime for, like, to get acclimated. Yeah, practice this weekend. Um, who are you guys playing this weekend out there? Anybody? Yourselves? Yeah, um, we're going to be practicing against ourselves on the first day. And then I am doing a terrible job of remembering the team's name right now, but we are practicing a team on the East Coast there. Um, that's so bad, but uh, it's escaped me. I think it's I think it might be NRG Elite, but I, I can't remember. Um, or it might be. Yeah, I don't know, man. Revo? I forgot. <laughs> Revo. It might hey, be it's Revo. All good. Yeah. You got well, dude, you got a lot going on. You got, you said you're cutting three episodes of the Play the Game podcast coming up here before you got a piece out. So, again, I do really appreciate you squeezing it in. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, I, and it's going to be exciting to watch you in this new chapter. I really do feel that you're in your prime right now. And, you know, 33, the way you've looked in uh, the past couple seasons, it's just, and, and knowing how hard you've been work, working, you know, one on one champ, world champ, you're a feared gunfighter, a feared snapshot, and a super fun dude to play with. So, uh, it was a pleasure uh, gracing the field with you and the 10 man at the, the uh, ICPL the last weekend. So yeah, brother, good luck. And uh, I'll see you pretty soon, man. Any last, anyone you want to thank or any last thoughts? Yeah. Thank. First of all, thank you, Maddie. Thanks for having me on. Uh, thank you. Go sports and NXL for everything that you guys do. That was the most legendary tournament ever with cap. So huge shout out to cap and everybody who put that together. Um, yeah. Just, I guess, uh, Go to ptgpaintball.com. Check out our show. We have our podcast running on there. Um, thank you to HK Army and DLX for everything that you guys do for Houston Heat. And uh, if you're in Arizona on Monday, the 21st, we're having a gel blaster party at the Ghost Town, uh, Goldfield Ghost Town in Arizona. So you can come out there on the 21st from 4 to 8 and hang out with us if you're in Arizona. <laughs> awesome, brother. All right, hey, again, best of luck. Uh, can't wait to see what you're going to be doing on Houston Heat for the very near future. And yeah, like I said, Federoff's back. Todd's coaching the team. Everyone's really hungry after that 11th place finish. So look out for Houston Heat at this next one. And, and it's going down in just about a week and a half. So I'm, I'm excited to get to the second event. It's going to be super fun. I'm Matty Marshall here, Go Sports Live. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you, Matt.